Friends, today is December 26th. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas Eve on the 24th and a, a fantastic Christmas Day. Christmas Day was a Sunday this year, and so it was a joy to have uh, Chris Woodard talk to us on Sunday in a beautiful way here at Valley Presbyterian Church. And I'm going to pick up the story uh, today of the wise men as we have it in Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to be reading the first six verses. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi, uh, wise men, came from the east to Jerusalem, and they were asking questions. Where is the child who's been born King of the Jews? For we've observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage, to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, mm, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. He called the experts together. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And we talked about how kings were shepherds uh, last week. Well, this is the prediction that the ultimate king, the ultimate, will be a shepherd for the whole people of Israel who will come. And uh, so Messiah, a prediction that this will take place in Bethlehem, in, in Judea. The, um, it's interesting that uh, as, we, as we think about this story, that life often begins with a willingness to go, doesn't it? To move. A prophet learns of God's calling and says, here I am, send me. Uh, the disciples heard Jesus say, you're invited to fish for people. You're invited to follow me. And they did. They left their boats or their nets or their plows and off they went. The wise men, in a similar way, they were experts in astrology, which is kind of a pseudoscience in the ancient world. They thought they saw a powerful portent, a portent, a powerful sign in their astronomical observations a signal that there was going to be a great new event happening in history and it was going to happen in Palestine. So they decided to follow the star and to go on a journey. Uh, you know, when God guides, we have to act. That's how we grow. That's how we're changed. The Christian way is not waiting for life to begin after, uh, after we die. It's not a just waiting for heaven. It's a holy adventure that begins now. It begins with acts of dedication and love and service. And our growth and our transformation depends on our willingness to act on God's direction. We get a direction uh, doing it. He invites and he calls and he nudges and he opens a door and he creates an opportunity and he sends a star and then we must act. Otherwise, our life is played out in, as my father used to say, the shadows and the shallows. We got to act. And so that's what the wise men do. And notice they act without knowing everything. They act on, on the information that they have. They don't have complete information. They just think that, that a king is going to be born. Uh, the appearance of new, new uh, stars in the heavens were seen, these planetary events, as, as an indication that, that a, 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 a king was going to be born. And so they follow the movement of this star and uh, they, they, they rectify their lack of understanding because the it's beautiful in a sense. In theology, we think of natural theology and, and scriptural theology. We think of uh, what we know from the study of the natural world, the things that God has made, and on the other hand, the things that God has revealed through his word in history and in relationships and through prophets and through Christ. All of these ways that revelation happens. We have nat natural theology on the one hand and revelation on the other. And so through natural theology, they kind of get to Bethlehem. Uh, they get to Judea, but then they don't know uh, where to go from there. They don't get to Bethlehem, they get to Jerusalem. And so they start asking questions. It's a beautiful thing. Where is this child who's been born, King of the Jews, and, and where can we find him? And King Herod calls the Bible scholars together to, to consult scripture. And because uh, natural theology doesn't get you all the way to, to the Christ child. Uh, it gets you to the sense of transcendence. It gets you to a God, perhaps, who's created the heavens and the earth, a sense of order and beauty and transcendence that we get through study 
and also through experiences of beauty and truth and love. Um, and uh, it's, it's the Bible scholars that know where this event is supposed to take place. Um, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes in our lives, we stop asking questions, don't we? We stop inquiring. Rather than leveraging other people's knowledge and benefiting from their expertise, we tend to close ourselves off and assume that, that what we know currently is sufficient. But every expert must remain a learner. Every teacher must remain a student. And uh, Jewish scripture scholars unearthed this prophecy uh, that, the, that the wise men didn't know, and that's how they got to Bethlehem. Without that local knowledge and that scriptural knowledge, the trip all the way from the Far East might have been wasted. The star can locate a region, uh, but it's wise men and wise women that, uh, that get you to the encounter with the Lord. Are you a learner in your life? Uh, are you consulting as you move along in your journey? Let's pray. Teach us, Lord. Show us new and deeper truths about ourselves and about the world and about you. We want to be learners and listeners and astute questioners. We want to grow through a natural theology and biblical theology, too. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.